Hello, my name is Suzanne Karen with the Sustainable Backyard Network. I moved to the country about seven months ago and I have started a new garden area. And the spot you see here, this used to be roses, climbing roses. The roses were removed last year, so the soil's been amended over the years. And I've started a native plant bed and an herb garden and some vegetables in this space. So you see here is some green beans. I've started mixed in with some celery. We have a native plant here, Shining Blue Star. This is the first year. And then I have some of my herbs, parsley, oregano. And I have my kale. I've been having some problems with my kale because the aphids have already discovered the kale. So I learned about um, both the wasp and ladybugs will eat the aphids. I can't, couldn't find any ladybugs, so it was suggested that I obtain some pheromones. And so you see here this little vial, and it's supposed to attract ladybugs. So I just uh, installed this a few days ago. So I'm waiting for the ladybugs to show up and eat the aphids, but I've already seen wasps in this area. Here's our climbing green beans and some more kale. A nasturtium is a companion plant and it's supposed to attract insects away from the plants. I have carrots here, so I thought this would be a good spot for carrots because the soil's been worked up, but I found out it needed to be worked up a little more, so I'm growing carrot stubs rather than carrots, so the soil's not loose enough for the carrots. I did want to show that I started um, the carrots and my broccoli and another plant I'll show you, borage, um, doing winter sowing this year. So this is a milk jug that I drilled some holes in. I planted, I had some soil and seeds and I planted the seeds in January, closed this up, set it up as a terrarium and Waited a few more months in about March, April, I had some seedlings and that's how my carrots, all my carrots I started using winter sowing. Here you see another shining blue star. And here's some more of my green beans. And here's uh, something called borage. And it also is a companion plant for tomatoes and for broccoli, cauliflower and the flowers are edible. And I started all these through my winter sowing process. So, and also here's some uh, dandelions. Of course, we have a lot of dandelions in the yard, but the dandelion leaves and flowers, I believe, are edible. And so I have been taking advantage of that. I've had problems here, as you can see, with some of the aphids. And we also have had problems with groundhogs. And that's why I have a netting over my carrots it's a deer netting trying to protect from groundhogs. And you also see hanging here from this fence is a sock and it has Irish spring soap in the socks and it's supposed to also repel insects away from your plants. So this is my small but hopefully productive rural garden. And so what you see here is a deer fence that we had to put up because deer are a predator to the garden. And so we have a, about a seven foot tall deer fence. You see these streams flying in the wind here. They're supposed to uh, distract the deer from jumping over um, into the garden. So far we haven't had problems with deer, but we have had problems with groundhogs and rabbits that have been getting into the garden and eating the baby seedlings. They ate my baby, uh, my seedling beets this year. So right now I don't have beets. Um, so I'm gonna, here we go into the garden. And I have a few strawberry plants I started this year. And I started the cucumbers and the cantaloupes that you see right here. They're starting to bloom. We're gonna be building a trellis. One of my favorite plants is okra. I started all these by seeds. I let the seed pod, a seed pod dry from last year. And one seed pod provided all these plants right here. So they all started from seedlings. And okra, once it starts producing in July and August, it doesn't stop producing. And it has a beautiful flower that it produces. I've also, um, so we have a lot of clay soil here. And so we have planted some daikon radishes and some artichoke 
and some sunflowers. And what's going on is the roots system of these plants help to break up the clay soil. So I'll let them, they'll just um, die at, a, at the end of their lifetime and the roots will help break up the soil. And then the leaves from the daikon, will, they'll cause, create compost on top of the, the bed. And here we have some peppers that I've planted, some bell peppers. I have some cabbage here, but we've been having problems with the cabbage worm. But you'll see a row of cabbages. And I've been planting some companion plants to try to deter some of the insects. So we have sage, we have nasturtium, and we have some lemon balm here. And then I planted by seedlings is a plant called borash, and it's a, uh, a tractor of bees. And so I planted them throughout the garden. Uh, I also learned that the groundhogs uh, like borash. So here is my bush beans. I've created a little cage to kind of protect them. And so they're starting to flower. So we'll have some beans soon. And I have about 12 variety of tomato plants here and they're starting to flower and produce tomatoes. So something uh, I tried this year was I put eggshells in the hole and some compost when I planted the tomatoes. And uh, it was recommended to get save the toilet paper rolls. You can see here because there's a worm that will start eating away at the stem. And once it starts doing that, you're t it's too late for your tomatoes. So I planted, included that in the plant. So here you see my garden. Thank you.